The night is young, but this election is riveting. We've had polls close in, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight states, seven, eight states so far. We have been able to call George Bush the winner in four of those states, most of them no surprise, Indiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, and Vermont. But the story at this hour is that the following states still too close to call. Virginia, New Hampshire, Georgia, Florida, at this hour, still too close to call in the presidential race. It doesn't mean that they may not fall one way or another, Jeff Greenfield, but I just want to point right out, now think, we can't. No, I think we called Vermont for Gore uh, You're rather right, than I'm Bush. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry, and my mistake. I don't think that will swing the election, Vermont. but we, I might as well get That's, on the record with I three electoral votes. I appreciate being corrected. I'm sure votes. it won't be the first mistake no, that, I that I make tonight. <laughs> Joining us now, uh, speaking of states won and uh, states we're not able to call, uh, we're going to go right to Nashville, Tennessee, and our correspondent there, John King, who's been with the Bush campaign through much of this campaign, and simultaneously to Austin, Texas, to our own Candy Crowley. Candy, uh, about uh, some of these states that we're not able to call yet that I think some of us might have assumed would already be in Governor Bush's corner, namely Virginia. Uh, and uh, and Georgia, uh, any reaction there from uh, your, the people you're talking with? Well, you, you know, they are still uh, optimistic here. It's tempered by the closeness of the race, which they say they expected. But I can tell you when you talk to uh, the Bush people, strategists and aides, uh, they have several ways that they can put together an electoral map that shows it in the Bush winning column. So they're sort of watching this as like uh, moving around saying, well, if we lose here but we win here, then this will happen. So they're still sort of looking at the map and feeling that it favors them. John King. A nervous urgency here tonight, Judy. Usually campaigns are over at this time. The candidates watching the results, not so in this race because it's so close. The vice president and Senator Lieberman, we're told, still making calls, satellite interviews, radio interviews, their wives both making calls. Just spoke to a White House official who says the president of the United States has made 40 calls himself, still making some at this hour, trying to turn out the Democratic vote. What they're looking at is nobody here expects Virginia or Georgia to end up in the Democratic column, but they think New Hampshire might be an opportunity to grab a few electoral votes they thought were going to go the other way. The man who directs the ground war for the vice president is a gentleman named Michael Hooley from Boston, Massachusetts. He called Senator Ted Kennedy today. He called the mayor of Boston, Thomas Menino, today, asked them to send anybody and everybody they could north of the border to try to turn out the vote late into the night in New Hampshire. They believe they may need those because they might lose here in the home state of Tennessee, although they're again working late into the night trying to pull this state out. They believe they will win. They are predicting they will win Florida, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, the big three as we're calling them, but they still they think they, they need 10 to 15 more electoral votes to get over the top still hunting for those even though the night is growing late. Candy, it's Jeff Greenfield. We've heard a lot about what the Gore campaign is doing, dispatching Jesse Jackson, dispatching Ted Kennedy, Michael Hooley, who if Gore wins may get an ambassadorship because he's in charge of the turnout. But what about the Bush people? Are they making any last minute efforts to get out their base? Sure, and they've had it in place, uh, you know, for some time. But, but look at some of these places. Uh, look at Michigan, uh, look at Wisconsin, look at Pennsylvania, and, and who do you have in charge of those states? Three Republican governors, uh, John Engler, Tommy Thompson, uh, and Tom Ridge. So, you know, there, there's machinery in place there and people on the ground there. Uh, they're in close contact with them, uh, but they, they do have those kinds of mechanisms in place. Obviously, uh, in Florida, uh, Jeb Bush is governor there. While he's here, uh, he has, a, you know, his whole state machine there. So they have some things in place, but they have been working on voter turnout, they tell me, for 17 months since it began and, and putting out phone calls. But yes, there are still last minute phone calls. You uh, saw George Bush making some of them this morning. Uh, but on the ground and in the states, yes, they're still manning the phone banks, uh, still knocking on doors and still looking for people to go out and vote. John King, uh, the news from St. Louis that the polls are going to stay open later there. And uh, we're looking at pictures now of uh, Governor George Bush arriving at, I believe, is it the hotel in Austin where he's going to be watching the returns, Candy? Actually, he's going to a, a restaurant next door with his father, his mother, and his brother, Jeb. Uh, but they will be watching the election returns uh, from a local hotel here, yes. It was a little dark, but uh, we'll take the word of our uh, cinematographers that that was indeed Governor Bush getting out of, getting out of the car. Uh, John King, I was just going to ask about the word from St. Louis, from Kate Snow, that 
A judge has ruled that they can keep the polls open later there. Any particular reaction from the Gore folks? Not to that specific decision, but we do know Donna Brazil, the Gore campaign manager, was here earlier tonight speaking to us. She's the key architect of the African-American turnout. She said they were calling all around the country to make sure, touching base with mayors to make sure the polls were open if necessary, even a few times calling the Justice Department today to report what they considered intimidating taxes, it, tactics in cities around the country. African-American turnout, obviously very critical to the vice president's chances. While we were here interviewing Donna Brazil, we talk a lot about telephone calls and phone banks. There's new technology now, too. You can get email on your pagers. And even as she was standing here, a state representative from the Philadelphia area sent her an email saying, I need you to call this radio station. Can you get the vice president or the president to call this radio station? We need reinforcements. So late into the night, the ground war continuing. The Gore campaign has what it's called the 211s strategy, meaning it needs, thinks it needs to win two of the that have 11 electoral votes. They believe Washington State will be one of those. The three others, Tennessee, Missouri, and Wisconsin. You just mentioned Missouri. Of those three, Tennessee, Missouri, and Wisconsin, they don't think Missouri is the one they will win tonight, although that turnout, obviously encouraging. Candy, uh, as, uh, as we hear about these, uh, these techniques that John is uh, referring to, uh, uh, literally calling people at the last minute saying, can you get the president or the vice president on the phone with the radio station? Uh, is this the kind of thing that uh, the Republicans are doing? Uh, they are. Um, George Bush did some radio interviews this morning. Uh, again, he has people in the states themselves uh, who are doing interviews with local media and that kind of thing. So, you know, there's a, a lot of people on the ground. And again, it's an organization that they have uh, built up. You know, we, I remember during the primary, they kept saying this is a 50 state campaign. And now we have headquarters in 42 of them and 43 of them and they were up with 50 uh, as early as uh, April so they, they've had these organizations in place they say they've had more volunteers than they've ever had uh, in a Republican presidential campaign uh, they have felt pretty good about this ground war uh, coming into that it coming into this day and they feel pretty good about it now all right Candy Crowley in Austin John King in Nashville thank you both we're gonna give you a little break but you know we're gonna be coming back to you often throughout the night much more ahead in eight minutes three more states have poll closings we'll be right back Joining us now once again from Washington, Mike McCurry, former Clinton White House press secretary, and Mary Madeline, co-host of CNN's Crossfire. To you both, these results from 7 o'clock, not able to call. We are, we are able to call South Carolina for George Bush, Vermont for Al Gore, but when it comes to Virginia, Georgia, and Florida, no surprise, we can't call them yet for either one. Mary, uh, what do you make of this? Well, I make a cautiousness that uh, will ultimately result, if I know for a fact, that Virginia, and I mean, I would stake my life on Virginia and Georgia going for Governor Bush. And I believe that Florida's going to go from, and again, it's a point that we made earlier that is, can be un, is unseeable at this point, and that is the efforts of the ground game, including the prolific absence, absentee ballot requests, which the Bush campaign knows by checking back on the records, were uh, uh, preponderantly toward for Republican requests, and that makes up one or two points in the polls. Mike, are you surprised that uh, we're not able to call this? Uh, Bernie, uh, I'm going to interrupt and throw to Mike. Excuse me, Bernard okay. Shaw, my colleague. CNN is going to report a call in Virginia. Virginia, CNN declares, goes to Texas Governor George Bush. This is just in. 13 electoral votes in Thomas Jefferson State. Well, that's, that is no surprise, and I think, Mary, you were uh, if, impressive and a fairly, uh, you know, not the, not the <laughs> longest shot of the night, that a state that hadn't voted for a Democrat for president as Lyndon Johnson would probably tilt in that direction. Uh, it, it may well be that we just want to say that we are not being, you know, we're being cautious enough so that we know what we're doing. But, but Mary and, and uh, Michael, pick up this theme about turnout, okay, about the fact that this late hour, people are out there driving people out to vote. 
Well, I, one thing, Jeff, I think that it would be good to remind viewers how these exit polls work and just walk them through the process. There has to be some uh, checking. The voter uh, service that actually collects these numbers, does the interviews, needs you need to go back and check the data you get precinct by precinct with some actual counts from real voters to make sure that your model yeah. for predicting some of these results are right. I think it's very appropriate for networks to hold back and wait until they know for sure what the answer is before they make one of these calls. That's what's going on here. I think that's appropriate. One of the things that may be happening is an extraordinary effort at turnout. Now, we've heard some reports about uh, Missouri, elsewhere, where there's even some legal action at this late hour to make sure that people get the opportunity to vote. Uh, that could indicate that there is a very extensive turnout effort underway that maybe some of the exit pollsters want to consider. All right, Mike McCurry, Mary Madeline, we'll come back to you shortly. We are just about two minutes away from poll closings in three states. We'll be right back. Closed captioning for this program has been provided by Verizon Communications. It's a world of rare insight and unique perspective. Unconventional wisdom with Jeff Greenfield. Fridays, 10 Eastern on CNN. Channel 2 Action News with anchors Monica Kaufman and John Pruitt. For major news. 1,500 people remain stranded by rising... For breaking news. Updating a breaking story. We for news with balance, clarity, and depth. Every day. Clark Howard's consumer reports that will save you money. Health news that could affect your life. And Glenn Burns' detailed weather forecast. For the most complete, in-depth coverage. Every day. Channel 2 Action News. Coverage you can count on. You've seen the debates. It's time for a fresh start. You've heard the speeches. I want to focus on results. Tonight, only one station offers convenient election coverage. 11 Alive News and NBC News join forces to bring you the most immediate results. And starting at 7, 11 Alive delivers live local coverage on TV 33. Join Brenda Wood and Wes Hutchinson for Decision 2000. Tonight on TV 33. A special midnight edition of Larry King Live tonight on CNN. From CNN Center in Atlanta, coverage of Election 2000 continues. Here again, Judy Woodruff, Bernard Shaw, Jeff Greenfield, and Bill Schneider. It is 7.30 p.m. on the East Coast, where the polls have closed in Ohio, North Carolina, and West Virginia. And to show you the extent of the ground war between these two gentlemen, we are not able to call Ohio yet in the presidential race for the White House. Too close to call in Ohio. Too close to call in the Tar Heel state of North Carolina with its 14 electoral votes up. And too close to call in West Virginia with its five electoral votes. And as we look at the electoral map, we are obviously putting none of these states in anybody's column, but we should note once again that in any puzzle that adds up to the White House for George W. Bush, Ohio and North Carolina have to be in that puzzle. West Virginia, which is a predominantly Democratic state, is one of those states that the Republicans thought they could take away from the Democrats. Wherever you see yellow, that's a uh-oh. We can't tell you anything about that state, Judy. Ohio is a state, as we know, uh, that has never, no Republican has ever won the White House without Ohio. We can say the same thing about Illinois, which we'll be talking about in the next hour or so. Two states, at least symbolically important uh, for George W. Bush, just because we cannot call Ohio right now doesn't mean he's not, it's not going to end up in his corner later, but for the time being, as Bernie said, still very hard fought there on the ground. Bill Schneider, what are you hearing? What I'm hearing is West Virginia, that's remarkable in the sense that that ought to be an easy win for Al Gore. It's only yeah. voted for Republican twice in the last 10 elections. Remember in 1992, Bush called Gore ozone man? Well, we asked voters in West Virginia, which is more important to you, promoting economic growth or protecting the environment? In West Virginia, those are not environmentalists. They say economic growth by almost two to one is more important to them. And the people who cited economic growth voted very heavily for George W. Bush. And that may explain another interesting pattern we're seeing in West Virginia. You know, the union vote is supposed to be going heavily for Al Gore. Unions are delivering for him. Well, among voters from union households in West Virginia, they are splitting their vote almost evenly between Gore and Bush. 
probably because of concern over Gore's environmental uh, stand. Which leads us to another of the keys that we have been talking about. We asked about social issues, the environment, which plays well for Democrats in places like California. But in this state, it's, as you say, it seems that the fear of Gore's environmentalism has hurt him among lunch bucket union Democrats. And, and that's why this traditionally Democratic state may be in play. Yep.